Yeah, and then yeah. Place it over here into one of two programs. Okay. Gene pop. No. These are the results. Gonna, these have to move over. That's what the program this. looks like. And the other one is Genetic Studio, which was written by a professor here at VCU. Yeah, well, yeah, Rodney but Dyer. you're not moving them. Now you're going to have to go and back and delete them. And both of these programs allow us to take this data, these little pieces of genes, and there are, there get statistically significant readings from them so we can tell if they're alike <laughs> or similar. We can measure different populations. Good. There it is. Different, these different populations inside Good. different pieces inside a population Fine. against one another to tell if they're statistically okay. different right or similar. Tell it they're codon. Now right click on population. Mm -hmm. Right click, till the strap. Here, I experiment is to try to figure out if oysters have a beneficial impact on the water and sediment quality. So how much nutrients do they indirectly remove by filtering the algae that they eat? Stick around here, Lenton. Look, hold on. Look, it looks like they went around the world, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Last time I got them from those folks, it cost me Look. more to ship them than it did. Uh, same here. Uh, we ended up short a few oysters here. We'd like to have between 60 and 100,000 oysters at the site. And we only right now have about 40-ish. All right. In a load bag. 2,000 babies. Oh, I'm just going to divide them into three equal piles, Lynn. That's okay. Okay. So this particular project is uh, a collaboration between Virginia Tech and VCU. Um, our funds are to determine whether or not uh, growing oysters commercially, so lots and lots of oysters, 100,000 or more oysters, uh, would benefit Chesapeake Bay sufficiently to allow an oyster farmer to maybe get a tax credit. A little bit acclimated. We have uh, sites at several locations in Chesapeake Bay. This particular site is nice because it's kind of like a, I call it a big aquarium. So the water comes into this, but it doesn't go anywhere, you know, it just sort of stops here and the oysters filter and then it moves back out. Um, and so we've got a nice sort of controlled low flow area. So we actually need to quantify the amount of nutrients that are removed from the water, both in the meat of the oyster, the shell of the oyster, and the activity of the oyster, the filtering that they do. Um, so this is the first few months of that project. It's a three-year project.
All right, look, Brian. Try this one. Mm. Tastes like nail polish. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> you know you're not getting dessert until you finish that, too. And I have chocolate chip cookies. Cambodia. Cambodia? <laughs> yeah, Cambodia. Cambodia? No, Cambodia! 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 Blew it. You wouldn't know it, but he's seven a couple of weeks from being eight years old. No, po, po. So, these are really good. <laughs> I didn't want kids. Uh, I was telling somebody that, oh, it was at a baby shower. I didn't want to have a family. I didn't want to have kids at all. And it wasn't very fun growing up. But I hit about 31 years old, and all of a sudden, every time I saw everybody else's kids, I'd start crying saying, I want one. And, you know, tough that out for a while, and it didn't get any better. <laughs> so, well, I was older. I was 35 when I had Brenna. Well, it was funny. Rusty, uh, Rusty didn't want kids either, so I had to convince him to have one. And he made me promise on a tape that we would never, that I would never ask him to have another one. So then we had Brenna, and she's all cute and bouncing around. And Rusty goes, "Oh, don't you want another one?" And I'm like, "Heck no! I'm not having another baby. No way. You have it." <laughs> oh, come on! I said, "No. You want another? One? We'll adopt one." It's okay. <laughs> so. And then started another nine months. It's about the same amount of time. It really does take a long time and a lot of effort either way you go. And uh, so we were able to get Brian just for that very reason. Because I said, uh-uh, there's no way I'm going through pregnancy again ever. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't know when. I'm going to send you away. I'm going to send you out of the room. <laughs> I mean, I think we, we give them, we try to give them the sustainability lessons and values, and they're pretty good with that. Um, it, the tough ones are the ones where you try to teach them to treat everybody fairly, you know, and with respect. Uh, A, because they're kids and they just want to dominate each other and bicker. But B, because then they model what we do, and, it, you know, if we let up just even for a minute, you know, and have one argument in front of them, or you say one disrespectful thing about some other driver. That's what they hone in on and remember. So, uh, you know, the values and the lessons would be to be tolerant and, and respect everybody, even if they don't think the same thing you do.